All right, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Water Warrior Fishing. I'm here at Occoquan Reservoir and I want this to be the start of just a series on my channel. I got my personal best bass out of this place, so it's it's loaded with big fish. I know that it's always a puzzle, it's always a mystery for me. I just want to kind of show you guys my journey to figure this place out and catch a solid limit out of here. It is 8 a.m. I'm going to fish until probably 1 p.m. I'm starting out here on this series of points. In between is some deeper water down to about 18 feet, but up on these points, it drops basically 2, 5, 8, 12, 15, 18. I'm sitting in 12, and that is perfect for a band at 300. Gets down to about 12 feet, and I'm using like a natural shad color blue back. I'm just going to whip that crankbait up onto the shallow edge of the point and work it out to deeper water. And we're not going to waste any time today. We're going to power fish, power fish our way down the lake, change locations as needed because I don't have time to waste. For most of my cranking, I use a Powell diesel rod. It is the 705 CB model. It's a medium heavy with mod moderate action, seven foot. I'm using a Daiwa Tatula Type R. I have no loyalty to any spot here until I nail some fish. So we'll just keep moving and finding out what's going on. When you want to locate the bait fish, they're not always on the main points. They're not always out on the main lake. Sometimes, especially during fall, they're going to start going back up in the creeks and the bass will follow. So you have to give the creeks a look. I'm headed towards the back of this creek right now. Still got a very deep depth contour along the shoreline. It's like 15 feet. Not exactly a bluff wall, but definitely a steep drop. I'm trying to figure out patterns, just what the fish are doing. And you can't do that if you're staying in one spot. Now I'm going to switch over to a Strike King 3 8 ounce white and blue spinnerbait with the trailer hook. I like a front Colorado for the vibration and the back willow for speed just comes through the water real nicely. It's a good combination of blades and both silver blades. All right, so with this spinner bait, it's the same deal. I'm targeting shallow structure, shallow cover. I'm trying to cover water as fast as I can. There we go. There we go. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Beautiful, healthy fish hooked with both the main hook and the trailer. So be sure. You know, I saw that fish hit it on the short strike back there, and I knew that a trailer hook would be necessary, but he actually gulped it. So two pounds even. Sweet. So that was the first fish of the day. I caught that fish in about five feet. I'm keeping every detail of how I caught that fish in the back of my mind, and we're gonna build a pattern. You wanna take similarities in your catches from location, depth, water temp. All of those details are part of the equation when you're trying to build a pattern, especially on a lake that confuses you like this one does for me. So that first fish came on the spinnerbait in shallow water. It wasn't next to any cover. It was kind of on a shoreline in between patches of isolated wood. So we're gonna continue with the spinnerbait on this shoreline and try to get another nice fish. See how it's kind of barren in between? It's just a clay bank and it's shallow. That's where the fish bit. Oh, another short strike right there. Oh, is that a fish? No? Oh yeah, ha <laughs> ha, wow. Wow, didn't even know he was there. Oh my God, he's pathetic. If you look, down this whole bank, it's just blank. There's nothing in the water. And that fish bit you know, up in five feet. So five seems to be the magic number right now. And nondescript banks with mixed isolated wood in between. So you see I've switched up to spinning gear. The only reason I'm doing that is because once I got past that shallow clay bank, I noticed that the depth changed drastically. So I was sitting about this far off from shore. It was 20 feet instead of five. I figured I'd approach the bluff wall here with a slower bait, something that sinks right to the bottom. 
see if I can get hit on some spinning gear, some light braid with a fluorocarbon leader, 20 pound fluorocarbon leader. We're gonna hit this isolated cover here. If we don't get bit, and we're gonna roll on down. All right, so no, no hits on that curly tail worm, the Texas rig, so I'm back with the spinner bait. No fish on the last stretch with the spinner bait, so now I'm cranking it in the back of this little cut here. Just trying to see if the fish are holding in shallow water generally or if it's like a very specific pattern. All right, so I'm gonna switch up to a Bandit Ledge Series 250, the discontinued crankbait that I'm always talking about. Love it, can't get enough of it. And this is gonna hit some deeper water. This allows me to have bottom contact constantly, no matter if I'm fishing shallow water or deeper out to about 14 feet. The other one, you're kind of restricted to shallow water because it's not gonna hit the bottom once you get past eight feet. I was just talking about it. I was just explaining to you why I switched. And sure enough, this fish hit out in about 12 feet. So they're moving out. Let's weigh him real quick and get him released. So just, just under two and a half. That was keeper number two. Fish number three, keeper number two. That fish was two six. The first one was two flat. So I've got four six in the boat, not bad. It's a lot better than I normally do here. I'm going parallel along the shorelines and I'm throwing the deeper crankbait, throwing it up into the shallow water, letting it bang on the cover. If I'm not getting bit, I'm throwing it out a little bit deeper. So I'm paralleling the bank and I'm hitting the shallow side, then the deep side. That fish hit on the deep side. And I had that thought in my mind that, hey, I might be missing fish out in this 12 foot zone. As the sun comes up, the fish might be moving out a little bit deeper. And that's exactly what that fish was doing. He was staging right on the mouth of this little cut here in a little bit deeper water, 12 feet. So I tied on that crankbait. Sure enough, he slammed it. And that was a lot of fun. So it is coming to the end of my day here. It was a short day. I probably fished about five or six hours. I got three fish total. One of them was a uh, fish stick. Didn't even count. I thought I had some sort of pattern figured out in the beginning of the day with those moving baits in shallow water. That didn't pan out the rest of the day. As soon as the sun came out, they kind of shut off. If I didn't have to come up and get the gas line, I would have stayed down lake. That's where my first two keepers came from. I would have stayed down there. If you don't have time constraints, my tip to you would be fish those moving baits in the beginning of the day and when that bite shuts off, stay in the same areas that you caught those fish in, but move out a little bit deeper and use jigs and soft plastic presentations to kind of finesse those fish to bite. Didn't have the opportunity to do that today. Don't get disappointed, don't get discouraged whenever you're not catching them all day. That's just the name of the game, it's fishing not catching guys. Thank you for joining me on Water Warrior Fishing. Until next time, tight lines. Right now, yo.